Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam RPG with me, Bring It Down. As soon as I loaded in, I uh, went from addicted to withdrawal. But let's talk to her. A young thin girl was graciously walking a line drawn in the sand, heeled a toe, balancing herself with barely visible hip movements. Noticing you, the blue-eyed performer turns around and asks shyly, Is there something you need? I'm training for my night, my tightrope routine. Name's Agafia Arcan Arcanova. I'm an acrobat. When she stops talking, a terrible voice screeches out from her lower abdomen. Hey, Gafia, you darn cow. Who are you talking to? Some hot stallion, I bet. Don't drive this one away with your shy little girl routine. You. Hey, lover boy, come closer. Agafia screams and shrinks away from you. Uh, she looks both insulted and violated, but that doesn't stop or even slow down the voice projecting from her lower body. Hey, bully boy, if you're out there, I can't see crap from down here. Just strip off Agafia's clothes and start ma and let's start making babies. Agafia angrily elbows herself in the stomach and the voice stops. After a pause to catch her breath, the girl continues in her own soft, shy voice. I am so sorry. That wasn't me talking just then. How may I help you? I just want to ask some questions. Uh, please, ask away. Uh, how's life in the circus? Pretty good, actually. Many people laugh and earn enough to feed ourselves. I can't dream of anything more beautiful than the children's eyes as they hold their breath while watching my performance above the arena. Agafia quiets down. A moment later, you start hearing that voice again. Now it's coming from the girl's torso. Most of the kids looking at you are older than 18, and they stare at your butt. <laughs> Must be an interesting experience. Uh, next question. I'm listening. Aren't you scared when you're walking the tightrope? It's just a matter of training. A normal person would never survive up there, but for me, walking the rope is like walking down a street. People really do conquer all obstacles. Uh, yes? Uh, what can you tell me about your colleagues? Uh, they're a weird bunch. We're not bound by blood, but we are, but we really are connected. Uh, maybe it's the mutations. That's why we can talk freely among ourselves without worrying someone will be grossed out or insulted. We also have our own inside jokes and stuff like that. It feels good to live among your own kind. I'm glad to hear everything's going well. Uh, next question. Uh, any rumors you'd like to share? Once I thought that Prescovia Pi, the animal trainer, was the only person capable of dominating a mutant insect. But then I heard about a man from Krasno who has a pet Myrmic. And get this, he doesn't even need to shout at it like Pre Prescovia does. They're like two brothers, human and ant. Can you believe it? They must have the weirdest family reunions. Another question. Uh, hey, let's change the subject. Okay, uh, what else did you want? Uh, what did I hear just now? Uh, where's that second voice coming from? Uh, well, I don't like to discuss it with strangers, but what can a girl do? I have this slight mutation. One of my organs has its own mind and likes to talk. Honestly, it's a gosh darn chatterbox, if you'll pardon the expression. When she stops talking, a terrible voice screeches out from her lower abdomen. The organ she's talking about ain't the spleen, feel me? Hey bud, Agafia seems to trust you. Could you maybe hook her up with a man for me? Maybe, maybe even your esteemed self. Come on. Hope this organ doesn't have teeth, at least. <laughs> Alexander's got the got the right priorities, I guess. Check for yourself, big guy. Dios mio. I sure hope no other bo part of my body starts talking after this meeting. Although my members might tell some pretty interesting stories. The 40-year-old virgin is the first story that comes to mind. <laughs> Jeez. Poor Fidel. Are you like a ventriloquist, a ventriloquist or something? Uh, just curious. Oh, it's not that easy. Sometimes I wish it was a split personality instead. Then at least I could hope for a cure. Uh, what do you know? So how do you and this organ thingy get along? Agafia falls silent, and her abdomen responds. You should be asking me what it's like to live in the body of a shy little cat that can't even land a man for us both to enjoy. And all this started off so cute and innocent. Uh, let's change the subject, okay? Okay, uh, what else did you want? Uh, General Nasty asked me asked me to ask you to star in an adult movie. Me? In an adult movie? Why, I'd never. A grumpy, grating voice from the girl's lower abdomen suddenly calls out. You stupid cow. You wouldn't have to do anything. I can take over. Now, for the love of God, tell the General we, we agree. Agafia screams at herself hysterically. 
Are you mad? I'll do no such thing. The voice from her abdomen calmly replies, Come on, Agafia. We put a bag over your head or something. Let me enjoy myself for once, sister. Come on, please. The bizarre disagreement between the girl and her rogue body continues like this for a while. You don't know whether you're amused or just uncomfortable. Finally, Agafia concludes the discussion with a nod. Fine. I'll be on the gosh darn ship when the time for the shoot comes. By no other circumstance whatsoever am I showing my face. I bet the general will, like, make you a mask or something? See you later. Alright, what a what a good time here at the uh, the circus. Alright, let's talk to her. A strict looking lady with her long fair hair gathered in a ponytail is yelling at a huge wasp hovering before her. The insect seems to be following her commands. No honey, you will fly through a ring of fire. You will, even if I have to feed you macaroni all week. Where did I leave my whip? Macaroni, what? Okay. The wasp seems angry as it spins its giant, silly-looking head this way and that, but does not flee the cage. You've heard of talented animal trainers, but you've never seen someone train a wasp. The woman turns to you. What do you need? Throw me an insect show today. That's circus life for you. When actors can't fly through a ring of fire, Madame Prescovia Pie's whole show gets postponed. Uh, that won't hurt, hurt our conversation, right? Uh, that'll affect our conversation. Uh, what do you need? Is Pi your real last name, or do you just like pies? What's so weird about my last name? Yes, I enjoy pies. But doesn't everyone? It has nothing to do with my name. As I expected. Uh, another question. Well? How's life in the circus? Until everyone respects me as their mistress, I'll be loyal to this den of freaks. I see. Uh, next question. So be it. Uh, what can you tell me about your colleagues? These mutants and freaks know one thing very well. They know their place. Specifically, that it's below me, on their knees. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah? Cool. Uh, next question. Ask away. Have you heard anything interesting lately? Have you heard that our Barbara the Bearded Lady is a seer? One day she told me she sensed a space-time anomaly somewhere in Krasno. It was some silver dude, who she told me felt all sorts of wrong. Weird, huh? Maybe it's time to examine the state of her mental health. Maybe she just dreamt it. It's weird that she knows such big scientific words. Uh, next question. Alright, let's change the subject, okay? Good, but remember, I am very busy. Uh, how did you make that wasp so eager to serve you? The woman smirks and shrugs. Maybe they see me as a kindred spirit. The woman bears her legs for you. They're extremely thin and covered in black and yellow striped uh, chitinous shell. Or chitinous shell. I'm not sure how to actually say that. Always flip between the two, chitinous and the chitinous. Also, my body se secretes a weird pheromone once a month, which attracts wasps from all around, unless I wear heavy duty pants. This mutation really suits you. You're as tough and as dangerous as a wasp, yet deep inside you have a honey core. Um, are you here to try out for the role of the living mirror, bold boy? Ah, and here is the sting of the beauteous she wasp. I'm serious. Poof, oof. Laugh if you will, but I'm also a member of the Wasp and Bee family. Why, all during my childhood, uh, my mother told me, your brothers are working constantly to keep this family afloat. All you do is drone on and on with your stupid, talentless poetry. Get it? A droning sound, like a wasp makes. A drone is also a kind of bee. <laughs> yeah, not the best kind of bee. Uh, quite an interesting mutation you got there. Uh, care to change the subject? A General Nasty asked me to ask you to star in an adult movie. Prescovia raises one eyebrow in surprise. That fat old clown whose butt I whipped every time I was in Krasno. He wants to be recorded at his very lowest. That really sounds funny. But I'm not going to waste my time slapping that old fool around. Now if there was a different, much stronger man for me to play with... Baby, I'll join you on set. We'll have so much fun. Everyone will be wishing they were us. You won't be allowed on set. What? Why? Look at me. I'm a tough, good-looking guy just like you wanted. Yeah, but you won't be allowed on set because I won't allow it. People like you should never have sex. Topic closed. Oh, hey, little lady. I bet we can find you a man if we'll see you're serious. Come to Krasno. Darn that nasty character. He may be an old, shriveled wretch, but he sure knows how to hire charismatic people. I'm in. Alright. If you uh, hire... Where's he at? 
The strong man first. I think you can use him in con yeah, here he is. In conversation. He blends in kind of well there, doesn't he? Maybe oh he's behind the tree, I think, but I came past. Okay. A doe eyed dumb looking but buff man of around thirty is repeatedly lifting lifting one of two huge weights on the ground before him. As he does, you find him yourself marveling at his amazing biceps. When he registers your presence, he throws one of the weights to the ground where it creates a small crater. After scratching his nose, he begins to speak aloud in a loud and slow voice. Oh ho ho! I'm Strongman Bambula, and you're a strongman who? You here to look at fellow strongman left weight, or to look at Piggy Pig? Uh, what's Piggy Pig, and how can I take a look at it? The straw man slaps his thigh, which is covered in a huge leather boot. Only silly and weak never heard of Piggy Pig. People say Piggy Pig is a cross that Bambula must carry through life. A terrible curse. But Bambula says no curse. Piggy Pig is funny, and it costs money to see him. 30 rubles. Ups. Don't tell Bambula's parents, but Bambula will spend money on vodka. Also condom. Dang it, show me this piggy pig. With an unsettling glee, the bullet grabs your money and starts to remove his boot. You will see piggy pig. You will gaze upon piggy pig. The boot is off. The stench of rotting flesh almost knocks you from your feet. The straw man's leg is either badly mutilated or a crazy mutation of some kind. Above the knee it looks like a normal, very muscular limb. But below, it's an oblong lump of flesh with little hooves, triangular ears, eyes, and a porcine snout. The straw man's foot looks exactly like a rotting pig's head, complete with yellow teeth uh, jutting out at crazy angles, and a slimy, warped pig nose. You know, child, after the Great War there were amputees on the streets everywhere, many of whom Stalin sent to Siberia because they were scaring the children, reminding people of the horrors of war. Uh, there in the far north, some of them were offered pigs as replacements for their lost limbs. Most, including me, your dear old dad, refused. But this generation has no morals. This pig-footed pig -footed brute is the proof. Bambula was born like this. Dios mio, what a stench, and what a sight. Looks like boot, but is actually pig pen. He he he. Am I the only one who can't tell where the pig ends and the man begins? Pig ends in knee. Um, thanks for showing me that, Bambula. But let's change the subject now, okay? Strong man agree, and piggy pig agree. Probably. Can you answer some questions for me? The strong man looks at you distrustfully. Only if not insulting questions. If kind questions, then Bambula agree. Uh, Bambula is your real name. No, dum dum. It's from the fancy lie book, The Three Fat Men, by Yuri Olesha. Look like fairy tale for child, but turned out to be Soviet propaganda piece about the moral superiority of communists over cap capitalists, who only exploit and rob. Bambula tore apart false book and ate it, to punish it, but he liked name of communist in book, and forgot his own name. Oh, I see. Another question then. Mm-hmm. How's life in the circus treating you? A circus-like family for Bambula. Every lady is mom, every man is dad. Only Laffy the Clown is like uncle who once got into little Bambula's bed at night, and touched places not allowed to touch. Bah bah. Well, every family has a freak. I'm talking about Laffy, not you. Another question. Ask away. Uh, do you have a speech impediment? You talk all... weird. He. Bambula went to doctor once. Asked to say why Bambula speak funny. Doctor says to Bambula, My friend, there is nothing that modern medicine can do in your case. You suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, which has stunned your mental growth since the age of five. Bambula laughed at doctor at first, so doctor gave Bambula candy and hugs. But then, in his heart of hearts, Bambula understood words of doctor. Bambula became very sad, locked self in room, started hurting self. Hee hee. It's a weird conversation. Uh, you're a positive guy, Bambula. Next question. Question. Uh, care to share any interesting stories with me? Hey, has Weakling heard that if you touch a Moo Moo cow's belly fingers, they'll start spitting out milk? Bambula lived in waste whole life, but never heard. Maybe his new thing. Uh, cows are always milkable. Next question. And really, anything that has nipples can be milked. 
Just ask, uh, just ask <laughs> Ben Stiller. I was sent here by General Nasty of Krasno. He wants you to join him on an adult movie set. The strong man scratches his head and asks, Will there be pretty lady with Bambula in movie? So that Bambula grab her and do uh uh? <laughs> Who would Bambula prefer? Bambula thinks for a minute or so and then explains. Look, Bambula loved girls, okay? Even though Uncle taught Bambula to do ug ug with men too. But Bambula is so strong now, he can break girl as they ug ug. Even make girl go to wheelchair with penetrative might of Bambula Jr. If you're so scared to touch lady or if you're scared to touch ladies, you could appear in a scene with the general. I bet he could put on a dress or something. Bambula claps and giggles. I agree now. Ladies are so tiny, small, fragile, or fragile. It is the holiday season after all. A Bambula break on accident, but men are strong, so Bambula can do ug ug with them with no fear. Great, uh, see you at the brothel. Why is she standing right here? She should be leaving. I can't ask her about the shoot yet because she hasn't done it yet. Uh, let's see, let's talk to this guy. A young man with bright red hair silently greets you with a raised hand. However, it seems his attention is focused on the circus freaks and mutants. Hello, uh, what's up? Are you also disappointed you didn't know before that places like the circus exist? Darn, what was I wasting my life on when I could have been hanging at the circus? Well, comrade, you haven't missed much. The circus just got here. Oh, that's nice. But I only smile if someone turns me upside down, because this dubious den of hustlers and monsters isn't enough to make my expression change except, maybe, to a grimace of displeasure and suspicion. Come on, Grandpa. Relax. Are you only here to stare at the clowns, mate? Or did you notice a couple of juicy cuties out of the corner of your eye? There's this one hot thing, uh, but she lays eggs. Uh, what has made the biggest impression on you? Oh, many things. Did you see that bearded woman? She's telling people's fortunes. And that guy over there isn't wearing makeup. No, he has a real beak growing from his face. I pulled on it so hard he started to bleed. And that cheerful clown. He's only part human, the tiniest part. Everything else about him is a cruel joke played by Mother Nature. I haven't even been inside the tent yet. People say a real wizard is performing in there. Yeah, the circus, the circus truly is a fascinating place. Well, let's change the subject. You're welcome. It's so nice here, even the conversations are pleasant. Uh, yeah, can you answer a couple questions for me? Why not? Uh, go ahead. Uh, what's your name? People call me Jess. It's a nickname from my stalker days. And usual nicknames are pretty common among stalkers. Uh, some of my colleagues had colorful names too, like Butch, Lorcan. Book, Book of Lorcan. What is that? What is that from? I'm imagining like a lich or a necromancer, right? Book of Lorcan. Anyway, uh, Cockalot, Daedrith. Uh, pretty sure that's only in Elder Scrolls, right? I know that it is, it is a Daedra in Elder Scrolls, the crocodile looking guys. Uh, Dumpling, uh, just to name a few. Is that so? Well, it's nice to meet you. Uh, next question. I'm listening. Uh, where are you coming from? I came here from Nalchik, up with the Caravaneers, and I'm glad I did. Just look at this circus. The only thing I like more than adventure is entertainment, and there's plenty of that here. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, one more question. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm an ex-stalker. I sell stuff that I found. I have caches sitting all over the region. If, for instance, I was feeling hungry, I just dig up an old car battery and bring it straight to town to sell. I sell my goods in small quantities so the market doesn't become oversaturated, which would hurt prices. That sounds wise. Uh, one more question. Uh, no any fresh rumors? I don't often visit Krasno, but I heard they turned their boat into an entertainment center. They apparently have a brothel and casino there now. None of this would have happened in the Soviet Union. Uh, probably. One more question. Alright, right. Go enjoy the fun. Ciao. Alright, let's enter the, uh, the tent proper. Uh, before the entrance, there sleeps a wrinkly old lady with a long nose. When you come closer, she speaks in a creaking voice. 
Entrance, 15 rubles. Is it worth the money? Go in and see for yourself. It's only 50, 15 rubles, Taiwan. Oh, I got you. Here you go. You pay the fee and the old woman hides it away in a tiny wooden box she keeps beneath her cloak. Have a nice one, kiddo. With that, she immediately falls back asleep. Okay, then. A huge company of men is gathered within the circus tent. A sailor spoiling for a fight, plump merchants, grim settlers, slave traders, pimps, painted ladies, drunk mercenaries, and other, and many other weird types armed with exotic weapons and dressed in foreign garb. Every single one of them is focused on the stage. Sorry, I had to take a sip of coffee. My throat is not uh, cooperating. I try to jam yourself into the crowd and get closer to the stage. You start shoving between people, elbowing random faces and getting elbowed in return. Finally, you push your way to the front row, where a, right where a mustache magician stands in the middle of his show. For my next trick, I will need a volunteer from the audience. After glancing quickly over the crowd, the magician points to you. Young man, would you like to come up on stage? Look around. Who, me? Yes, yes, you, young man. Come on, venture into the arena, and bring your friends with you if you've got any. My new tricks allow for several participants. Hey, I can wait. Whoa, don't push. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Go on, no need to be shy. Me, me, call me. Like a kind of post-nuclear... F. Tushenko? The magician smiles and waves the hexagen. Darn, do I have to? I'm not a clown for your, for your amusement. You only look like one, dear friend. Please, come on up. The audience parts let you through. A stepping into the arena, you can feel a hundred eyes on your back. Every single person in the circus is looking straight at you. I hear goes nothing. Enter the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tonight, tonight I, the great Efusio, I will demonstrate an actual miracle. And your role in this trick is very simple. I'll start the incantation, but you must finish it for me. Now then, is it Cave Enemicum, Abave Finicum, Seem Salabim, um, Bimi Beam? Aflubim, um, Aflubim. Hold on, let me think. Achim Abadim. The magician turns to you, waiting for anything that rhymes. Achiribim. So bars didn't get to participate. After the trick, you feel a bit dazed. The great of officio uh, calmly lifts his hands, but the audience isn't moved. There are a few slow claps, and one person screams, boring. Either the trick was a failure, or these jaded folks have seen something like it before. The magician tugs nervously at his collar, and looks to you in confusion. Tough crowd today, my boy. He turns to the crowd once more, and inspiration strikes, pointing at you. He yells. Now this person, instantly transformed into a true showman by my magical musings, will display for you a trick of his own. I knew this would end badly. So awkward. Go on, give him hell, child. Make this crowd beg for more. Just like your old papa, I made his cellmates beg him to narrate his novels over and over. Ha ha ha. I'm actually curious. Go on, present something to the fine public. Okay, so these are actual skill checks, so this is, I think, is Charisma, I'm sure this is, uh, Dexterity, I think they're primary attributes, so I don't know what this one would be, and this would be Strength. Uh, so show off your Strength. Oh, okay, you actually get to select. That works out. A few dumbbells are lying in one corner of the arena. Pick one. Grab the heaviest one. Without any trouble, you hoist the heaviest weight above your head. Hold it for a few seconds, then lower it to the floor. This makes a powerful impression to, on the spectators. People start clapping and whistling at your physical prowess. Ta-da! Great work, buddy. The magician places his hand behind your head and digs a bright red clown nose out of your ear. Here's something for your trouble, friend. Now let's move on. The roar of massive applause escorts you from the stage. Yeah, that was okay. Alright, so that's how you get the clown nose. I had it mixed up. So minus one to personality, but plus one to luck. 
A clown nose is a great prop in performing at children's parties. In the waste, however, this thing raises more questions than it can answer. Now, did we talk to her? We did not. A well-built, fair-haired woman is leisurely strolling around the circus, occasionally stopping to stare at the mutants performing tricks or rehearsing for the show. Seeing you, she asks with a smirk. Pardon me, are you a guest here, or are you, like, the local staff? <laughs> oh, cool. So, uh, I got the clown nose, so I can actually commit to her on part of the show. As it turns out, I'm a circus man myself now. Show the woman her clown's nose. The woman claps her hands with glee. There are so many of you here. Uh, what's your best trick? I pay 10 rubles for a one minute performance. Let me tell you a joke. I want his nibbler stop being a nibbler. The woman shrugs. And when it has no teeth. How can you nibble if you have no teeth? It's not a nibbler. Uh, it's a, it's a sucker. The woman is barely able to crack a smile at your joke. Not bad. Here are your ten rubles. Oh, thank you. Now let's change the subject. Okay. Can you answer a couple of uh, questions for me? Can I? Uh, where are you from? Uh, far away. You've never heard of the place, so there's no point in uh, telling you. Fair enough. Next question. One more question, then. Good grief. Uh, what are you doing in the circus? I'm enjoying life. Do you know how rare entertainment is nowadays? Be it circus or cinema? As soon as I found out tents were going up here, I came as fast as I could. I understand. Uh, next question. Uh, how do you like this place? It's not bad at all. Lots of mutants, of course, reeking of moonshine and decay. But if one was to motivate them by way of a few rubles, even these freaks may have an amazing trick to share. Uh, this is especially true of Gutsy the Clown. I do wonder why the balls he pulls from under his shirt are always covered with some kind of goo. But if you know the answer, don't tell me. I want to solve it myself. Nature is full of mystery. One more question. Got any good rumors to share? I've heard there was a fight between two of our local divas. Barbara the Bearded Woman, and the woman, the Bird Woman Yana. Hope it doesn't get in the way of their performance. Yeah, me too. One more question. Two subject. Alright. Alright, let's go loot the inside of the aircraft. That'll probably be all that we do for this episode. So we'll have one more episode here at the circus. I think we only have, what, four more NPCs to talk to? One, two, three... And then four up here. Uh, in the... Towards the cockpit. What do you do with the pellets, though? What fires the pellets? I'm assuming a zip gun? Alright, so those briefcases you can loot. I think they have good money in them, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if I'll be able to get it while she's in here or not. Alright, I'm not trying to steal. I'm not trying to steal. Alright, so she can't see me when I'm standing this far away because of the ghillie suit. I'm really digging the ghillie suit. Nice, 2,000, 2,000 rubles. I'm going to wait and talk to her to la uh, last after I speak to everyone else here. Uh, cause she's the one that we need to talk to for the quest that the uh, head of the Chamber of Commerce gave us, and Nikolai. He said if we went on a murderous rampage, we should start with her. Because remember, he wanted us to kill everybody here.
But we have we do have another quest to do here before we leave. But we should wrap it up all in the next one. We actually have two quests. Uh, but one we're going to finish in Krasno. Was she the one that I spoke to already? Okay, yeah. Alright, I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we'll speak to the bearded lady and this couple here. Uh, both of which are going to give us, well, progress a quest and give us a quest. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.